Hello Intune friends! In this video we're going to enroll a Linux device. We're actually going to create the Linux device also and we're going to see what can be done within Intune with Linux. Uh, bad news, not so much can be done at the, this moment but the Microsoft will surely add some more features. So if we just look quickly in the console, so if we look under, let's look at apps. So here by platform you see that there's Windows, iOS, macOS, and Android, but there you can't push any apps to Linux device at the moment. If we go under devices, you see here by platform, we have the Penguin, he's called the Tux. And if we go there, we can enroll. I have enrolled one device who's not encrypted. That's why it's show up as not compliant. And that Basically, what you can do at this time in, is to check uh, some compliance policy. We're going to create one. So let's start to create another device, uh, GBN Ubuntu 02, I'm going to name it. And we have that encrypted. And yes, today, Microsoft Intune only support Ubuntu distrib uh, distribution. You know, it exists a lot of uh, Debian, Red Hat and everything, but no Ubuntu. Ubuntu, which means um, humanity on the language of uh, Zulu. So to create an, another uh, Intune machine, we need the ISO file. So here I have uh, the download links. It's easy to find, but I will still put it in the description. So you have two options here, Ubuntu 2204.1 LTS, uh, long-term support. That means they will support it for a long time, several, uh, five years, it says. And we also have 2210, which is supported a shorter time. I'm actually going to go with this one. So I'm going to start download this one. That's going to take a while. I'll pause the video and come back when this one has finished. Okay, the download is finished and I got my uh, Ubuntu file here. So I'm going to cut this one and I have a folder with ISO. So I'm going to put it here. And let's create a Hyper-V machine. So I have my other machine here. So you can create by template. Uh, I'm going to do it um, the normal uh, slow way, virtual machine. So let's go next. So name, I'm going to call this one GBN Ubuntu and 02. It's going to be my second one. I'll store it in the default. Uh, both works, but it support generation two. So I'm going to go with that. Uh, four gig is enough. Um, I'll give that four gig. Well, it's the minimum requirement. I'll bump it up to six uh, gig then. I'm going to put it on my default switch for, so it reach internet. And it doesn't have to be that big. Uh, I'll do a 60. It doesn't have to be that big either. And going to install it from an ISO file. And that's not my place. I want it under GBN ISO. So here, Ubuntu. That's the ISO I want. And I think we are finished. There are a few things we have to take in consideration since I didn't uh, do through the template. Uh, I'll go here. I select my machine. Then I go settings. We have to remove a secure boot. Secure boot is enabled. Let's remove that and we should be good. So let's run this one. So I'm going to first connect and then start it. So we have something to look at. And start this one. It's going to take a little while probably. Perfect. So here we have the GNU group the bootloader so let's uh, try and install not try actually install ubuntu their logo we have some critical choice that we have to do in the beginning we can do nearly a normal one so um, i want to install it i don't want to just try um I however gonna I have a French keyboard and what I like is here that you can try it out so for example some strange character like at sign it's usually pretty good that works it's actually where they had signed in yeah it looks good so I'll keep this normal one just a yes 
it's an assertive keyboard so I'll continue on this one uh, normal installation sure download uh, yeah let's do that as well I have some changes I want to do on the disk yeah very important here if I continue install now I can't get this one fully encrypted. You can encrypt some folders after, but it's only during installation. So we have to click advanced feature here, here, and click here, use LVM with the new Ubuntu, logical volume management it stands for. And we definitely want to encrypt the new installation for security. So if you miss this part again, then it's not gonna be, it can't be compliant with Intune because this is the only place. So if you have installed, you will have to reinstall if you want to have a full encryption. So now we have LVM and encryption selected. If you see that, you are good. So we can install now. So we need to put the security key. I'm gonna put one. I mean, it's probably good to generate the recovery key but I'm not gonna do that for now. And it's probably a good idea to overwrite empty disk space as well, but that's gonna take much longer and I don't want that. I just want uh, the quick one to get this running. So install now. And that's why it's important that you verify your keyboard uh, when you select, because uh, here you could see what you have been typing here, of course, to verify. So here it shows what it's going to do. Here it's going to put on the first disk. That looks perfect. Continue. My time zone. I'm in Paris. That's correct. Get that from my IP. So your name. I'm going to put John Brent. But computer name. No. I'm going to put my GBN. Oops. Ubuntu. And it's my second machine. Username John. That sounds perfect. I'll put the password. And it matched. Um, normally you would not say login automatically. Nah, I don't do it. It could maybe be good for this one. So now it's gonna take some time. So I'm gonna fast forward uh, this video. Okay, <clears throat> so first part done, let's restart. And remove the media if it's not already done. It is done, perfect. Uh, please remove media and hit enter. And here comes our encryption. So we need to decrypt, perfect. That part works. Be sure to remember that password. Well, I'll let it do file system checks. That's me. Okay, so now we are in. So this popped up. Let's uh, let's install the latest of everything. So it's gonna be a few megabytes to download. Let's install that. Meanwhile, that installed. One of the prerequisite is to have a Microsoft Edge, and we don't have Edge, but we have Firefox, so we can use Firefox to get Edge. I'll open a new tab here, and if we just search for uh, 
enroll Linux Intune. And I'm going to put the link in the description. And this is in French. Sorry for that. I'm going to change this to English. So this uh, website is very useful for this. The whole video is based out of that. So there are some prerequisite. So first we need to install Ubuntu Desktop. Check. We have done that. The other prerequisite, we need the Microsoft Edge uh, browser. Let's get that. Let's open that in new tab. And let's accept cookies. And if we scroll to the bottom here, we can download for your device. Perfect. So Windows, no, Mac, no, no. But down here we have uh, for Linux, perfect. So we have two choices here, RPM or Deb, which one to take? Well, RPM stands for uh, Red Hat uh, Packager Manager, and that's for Red Hat uh, and those uh, like Fedora. This is Debian uh, packages, and that's for Debian distributions, and Ubuntu actually come from Debian, so this is the one we want. So I'm gonna download this one. So let's accept and download. We wanna install Edge for Linux. So it says the download is starting, perfect. That's also some size, so uh, I'm gonna fast forward this video. Okay, now we got it, so let's open up here, let's install this one, perfect, and we hit install, I'll need to put my password again, and that password has nothing to do with Intune, it's a local account, okay, so it's preparing, Could not lock. Maybe uh, APT is the installer of uh, Deb. It's probably busy doing the other updates. So let's wait a bit. Where do I have software updater? Yeah, it's installing a lot of other updates. So I'm gonna let this one finish. And then I'm gonna hit on install again and hopefully this error go away. So let's fast forward to that. Perfect. Let's restart a bit later. Let's see if the APT daemon is ready to install Edge now. Preparing. Nothing locking the process, I hope. I'll close this one since that one was the previous. See if it comes back. Ah, looks like it might be installed. No, it didn't seem to work. My experience is that it prefer a restart also. Perfect, we did a lot of updates. Let's do a restart. So we'll go up here. We go to this little power and let's restart this one. Perfect, restart now. So let's see if Edge is up to start this time. That looks better. So we have installed Edge. Next gonna be the Intune app. But we can start, uh, we can continue from Edge and look at all the steps. So let's accept and agree. Uh, like focused, confirm, sign in to sync. Well, I will not do that now. I'll accept all the cookies. I'll open a new browser. Let's put enroll Linux and just Intune. Oh, I misspelled enroll, but it took it anyway. Excellent. Always these cookies to approve. I like that it's, it looks big. So now we are prerequisite. We have installed Edge version 102 and later. Well, we always get the latest and we got 109. So let's now, oops. So let's now, I will open this in the new tab. And now we need to get the Intune app for Linux. A bit 
this might be the most difficult part of um, <laughs> all these steps. So let's open up a terminal. We have our terminal here. And then we're just going to copy all these commands and put in the terminal. There. Let's select this one. I'll right click. Copy. Let's go to the terminal. I'll just look where we are. PVD. We are in my home user. Okay, perfect. Let's uh, paste this command, the first one, to install curl. And again, it wants the password. And it looks like I mistyped my password. What about now? That looked better. Do you want to continue? Yes. Interesting happen at the bottom. Let's see if I can uh, scroll down this one like that. Okay, so that step is done. So then we have a package signing key, depends on which OS. So we actually have 22.10, but at least it's 22. So let's go with this one. So you see higher up here is if you were, have chosen or have an older 20.04. So we're gonna run uh, this command. So I'm gonna copy again. This time I might use the three dots. Three dots, copy, go back to the terminal. Let's uh, paste this one here and run. So this is the second command that we run. Done. We go back. Now we need to, as sudo, we need to uh, install as root and add to the keychains, uh, key rings it's called. On, it's on Mac, it's keychain. And paste. So I'm just pasting these commands and run them. That's done. Soon we are coming to the more interesting part. So now in this one here, we echo, we're going to write all this in uh, to um, this uh, list file. So I'll take all that and the sudo and copy, go back to my terminal, right click, paste it and run that. And now the last, which is not it's optional. Now we're just removing the one that we created the uh, higher up, the Microsoft uh, GPG. And let's copy this one and paste that in here. Perfect. Now we can install the Microsoft Intune app. So first we need to do a sudo apt update to just update all what we already have. Then we're going to install Intune portal. So it's possible this update is going to take a little time. Paste that in here and hit enter. So this is going to take a bit of time. Okay, all packages update. Probably we already run the update. That's why it went faster than I thought. So now this comes the cool part. Now we're going to install it, the app. That's going to help us to enroll this device to uh, Intune, which is the whole point of this video. So install this one. Do you want to continue? Very much, yes. Okay, it's done. So if we look here, we should have a new item. And we do, Microsoft Intune, let's open that. So here we need to sign in. And now, so far we have only signed in with the local uh, Linux account. Now we need to use our Azure account. I'm gonna do john at brint.cloud, which is the name of my tenant. Go next. I'm going to bring my MFA here closer to me because I'm soon going to need it. So my password, my branding haven't come down yet. Uh, if I know my password, yes, I know there. Normally it should be more than green. It should be my background also. So now here comes the MFA. So let's I'll approve my connection, approve face recognition and we're good sure let's register this one
and it's going to tell what it can see. It's going to be able to sort of spy on this Linux uh, uh, device. So it's going to tell all the permission that it's going to give. So sure, setup exists, begin. So this is what the organization is going to be able to see. It's going to see my model serial number. Excellent. I haven't seen the serial number, maybe because I'm running a virtual machine. See the names of all the apps you have installed. I haven't seen that either. Identify your device name. Yes. And collect work app and networks. So we'll see if we see some of these. So now we are registering this device. So it definitely see that the, the name is connect. Now it's checking status if it's uh, compliant. Operating system Ubuntu. Perfect. Ownership type is not set. Original name. Perfect. So we are pretty much done on this device now. So let me go to the console. And I'm not sure it's, we will be able to see it right off. But if we go to devices, let's see if we see some more devices. Not yet. So we haven't seen it here. And I have missed one step. If we go back here to the instructions, and then we look at the Microsoft Intune app. I opened that in the new tab. So what have we done? We have installed, we have done all this. We have done this line, but I forgot to do the reboot your device. So let's go back to our Linux device and we have to reboot it again. So I'll close this one. Click up here and restart. And after the restart, we should be good. And it should be showing up in our Intune portal. So again, the encryption. And I'm still logging in locally with the Linux um, account. So it's not the uh, Azure AD login, even though it says the same name here. Okay, we're in. We can go back to our app. It's going to say again, sign in, but don't worry. You don't have to type in all your password and everything. It's already registered. The checking status, we can let the check its status. So now we have followed everything in the article. So now if we go back to the console and do a refresh, we should see a Ubuntu 2 here now. And we do. And I see now they don't really match the same character, but not. This one say compliant. This one say not compliant. I don't even have a compliant policy yet. Let's see what we can see. Since this is a Hyper-V, it doesn't... Well, it has a serial number, but for me it's not showing yet. I guess if you have a real uh, hardware device, you would see more. So, we don't see that much. You could assign it to a user. Well, it should, uh, device category, sorry. And a management name haven't shown up yet. It should show up. And here we can see the operating system version and that it's Linux. And we're actually going to use this to create the group. That's the next thing. But the rest, manufacturer and everything, it doesn't show that. I hope it's going to be better in the, in the future. Because Microsoft is going to add more features. So let's start by creating a group. Why a group? Because we're going to do um, uh, a compliance uh, policy. So you remember here in the beginning, compliance policy, and we're going to target that to a group, and we're going to target all our Linux. So let's create that group. So I go to groups here, and let's do a dynamic so we don't have to manually add one each time. So we do a new group. Security group is just fine. I'm going to call this one GBN uh, Linux Devices, and all GBN Linux devices. We don't assign any role. Membership going to be dynamic for devices. Owner, I'm going to put myself. And now add a query. So what's the query going to be? Well, we're going to use uh, device OS type. And it's going to be equals 
What is going to be equals? Well, we saw that in the list earlier. It was uh, Linux. So we, we can test this one by going here, validate rules. So if we add some devices, I'm going to add all my four devices. Two are Windows 11, two are uh, Linux. I hope only two will show up as member of this group. Perfect. Those are Ubuntu. They are members of, the, will be member of this group. The Windows 11 won't be. Perfect. Because, well, I wanted only my uh, Linux devices in there. So the, um, it checks out pretty good. So we can save this one. And let's create it. I'll start to have a few groups here. It says it's created. Let's do a refresh. I don't see it in my list yet. So as long as it says nine groups, it's not there. Let's do 10 groups. There it came. So Linux devices, if we click on it, has it already the members? No, it's going to take a little time to run. But that's fine. We have more stuff to do. We are soon finished. So if we go to devices, we have the Linux uh, tab here. We're going to create a compliance policy. And we want to see if the device is encrypted. And remember, one of them are encrypted, one is not. So I'm going to create the policy. And it pre since I was standing on the Linux, it's prefixed with Linux. And you have only settings catalog. Let's create. So I'm going to call this one GBN, not BitLocker policy, but uh, maybe I call it Linux uh, encryption profile. It's not a policy. Uh, verify that all uh, Linux devices are encrypted as requested by our security team. A very big team at my fake company. Compliance settings. We have to add more settings. So what kind of settings do we have? We don't have that much. We can set password policy. You have custom uh, compliance, which is pretty cool because you can do your own script. So that means you can do a lot of uh, different um, uh, checking. And allow distribution. Well, uh, right now it's only Ubuntu, but you can do per OS version, the max and minus and type like LBS. Well, we just want to check uh, device encryption. So we require that it is encrypted. And remember, you have to do that from the beginning. So we, we are pretty good here. And it's required. Yes, that's a requirement. So we are good and go next. Actions. Um, we already have marked devices non-compliant immediately. So if they are not encrypted, directly they become. You could wait a few days if you want to give them the chance to be compliance, but I think that's unnecessary for Linux devices because if they are not fully uh, encrypted, you have to reinstall it anyway. So there's no, there's no need to give more time. Either you are encrypted or you're not. In BitLocker and in FileVault for Mac, you can uh, encrypt later. There you could have a sort of extra days for user to give them time. Assignment, we have our group. So let's add our group. And it's GBN Linux devices. And right now, those are zero, but that's going to catch up. So now we have created our policy. It's there. So I'm going to post the video and come back when we see them in the group. So I have waited over an hour and my dynamic group uh, haven't updated yet, so I changed it to static and added my two, but trust me, it will work. I'm just too lazy to wait that long. So you can definitely keep that and just wait. So now we have these two. I even started up, yeah, I have one hour, so I had a lot of time. I started up my secondary machine and uh, that one became uh, compliant, but now it's not. So, well, this one is compliant, but now this one should not be compliant if it checked in because this one doesn't have any uh, any encryption. Okay, let's try again here now. So the machine on the right side, Ubuntu one, is not encrypted, so it should not be compliant if we check. And the one on the left is uh, is encrypted. So I'll do a refresh, and this one should check back into Intune and see if it picked up the new. Uh, uh, compliance policy, which should uh, say that, hey, you are not compliant. Okay, now it worked. So this one is not compliant. 
if we go over to um, my other machine here, we have been locked. And this one is encrypted. We saw that. So if we do a refresh, this one should stay compliant. Sometimes this one uh, circulate. I don't know. Maybe it already checked. This one is still compliant. Perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. Um, so if we now, we're going to wrap up this video. So here is the encryption. It has to be on. I don't know if it's so, if it's already see that one is not compliant. Yes. Now it's back before it was actually compliant. So if we go here to Linux, we have one compliant and one non-compliant. And for the reason that our compliance policy check if it is encrypted or not. And we could have looked at password length and uh, more like the OS version and stuff to make it compliant. So you have some more settings. So that's basically all you can do with the uh, Linux in Intune today. Uh, I hope to do future video when they have added more features, but at least we have them enrolled and that's already good. Then you get some inventory data. So thank you very much for following along this video. See you in another video. Have a great day.